<笑>はいGents and all of you dirty scumbags that still order dog food and cat litter even during freaking Christmas. I hope you all rotting hell. I bring you my glorious unwashed neck bearded mug because Christmas season is over and I am done with it and I don't want to take care of anything. I just want to go back to producing things for the internet, you know, reclaiming some of my life back that the post office has thoroughly thrashed, consumed, and digested in its disgusting machine-like guts, and I have been spouted out like so much trash out of its butthole, and this is the result. And this is me. Let's do a year-end... Wow. Whoa, there's me in the corner of the video, because you see, as a proper YouTuber, you must put yourself as a person in the videos, otherwise the monetization goes away. I don't even know why I'm even talking about that, because I'm releasing this video in January, where everybody takes a break, but I am, I break the mold. I don't take breaks, I break molds. Quote me on that. And uh, I don't care about the money that this makes, because believe me, my soul it has been trampled into oblivion. It is now a smudge on the floor. The bank account did did do quite okay with all the overtime that I've been working. Anyway, year-end review of all the games that I played in 2021. Never done this before. I was, I'm going to do it. What, what, are you going to stop? You can't stop me from doing this. Please don't stop me. I, I really want to talk about the games that I have played. These are all my 2020 games. Not gonna talk about them. You can look at them and see how much of a of a savvy video gamer I am. Let's start here with Hellpoint, played in February seventh. Total play time thirty eight minutes. Apparently, uh, if you had asked me in February, if you had asked me right now how long I played in February, I would have told you yeah, I probably played a good couple hours of Hellpoint. Uh, I remember having a great time and playing for quite a, quite a while. Apparently, it was only thirty eight minutes. It made an impression, though. I thought it was really cool. It's a Souls-like, it's a Souls, uh, Dark Souls clone, pretty much, with a futuristic, futuristic demonic slant, if I remember correctly. I, I would definitely recommend it for the time that I played. I have no idea about late game or anything like that, I, you know, because I played 38 minutes of it. But I had a really great impression, and if I hadn't been distracted by a butterfly or whatever other nonsense that was happening at the time, I would have definitely had kept playing it that's going to be a quite the trend throughout my quote-unquote review i guess impressions of every uh, game that i'm going to be talking about i was distracted by x and that's why i never finished it let's carry on to the next row of games there's quite a few of them oh uh, the, the slow reveal next comes february it's been since february 8th that i did my last run of enter the gungeon what can i possibly say about enter the gungeon that I haven't already said. There is a massive series on the channel. There, It is one of the few games that I have 100%ed. There is no challenge. There is no stone left unturned in Enter the Gungeon. 100% recommend it. I even wrote a review. I'll be writing also reviews of the games that I feel is warranted for the game that I, the time that I played that I never did write a review, but I definitely remember writing a review for end the gun just go to the store this is not going to start playing with sound is it no i definitely wrote a review from freaking enter the gungeon Enter the gungeon trained me for war i am deeply familiar with over 100 different firearms explosives and shark cannons i have no fear charging into hectic crossfire i've mowed down thousands and feel nothing but joy 10 out of 10 would go to bully hell and back anytime and then a little bit of shameless self-promotion right there go back to the list hopefully 
all the reviews will be that short. I'll be, I'll be reading them. Why not? That they summarize my thoughts on uh, video games. So it makes all the sense in the world to read the review as I speak about all this nonsense. Spelunky. Again, kind of weird to say that I have not played Spelunky HD since February 16th. That's the last time that I booted it up. You don't need me to speak any more words about the wondrous, perfect game that is Spelunky HD. It is a fantastic piece of software. And there is nothing else that I can possibly say about it. Did I put myself a little too... Uh, there you go. There you go. That, now that's exactly within the edges of the of the window, isn't it? I think so. Anyway, there may be an annoying little uh, line at the end, at the bottom of the window that's going to drive you nuts. It will drive me nuts during editing, I'm sure. But I'm not going to worry about it. I am... Starting the new year, not going to obsess over little things like that. Who cares? Nobody cares. Splunky HD, 100% recommended. Of course, excellent video game. Perhaps one of the greatest of all time. Neon Abyss. This is a game that I was going to make a video about it. And a few things kind of got in the way and I never got around to it. I was just going to do one of those videos where we, I play through the game a couple runs and I explain to you what the game is about because as you can see I played 5.2 hours of it and I had a pretty damn good grasp. Bottom line is enter the gungeon in 2D. My impressions was it's a great game. It's a fun game. I recommend it. Now do you want to have more fun? Just play enter the gungeon. Do you want to play this game but better? Play enter the gungeon. Now, if you're completely done with Enter the Gungeon, this game will definitely scratch that very same itch. Uh, it's very much like, uh, also a way to turn that around. It is, this is Exit the Dungeon done right. You know how Exit the Gungeon was basically, a, it was a 2D version of Enter the Gungeon, and it was kind of a letdown. This is Exit the Gungeon, but really good. Uh, and I would very much recommend it. I still don't feel like I am... Um, uh, qualified to write a review, but definitely a roguelike that I am down with and I would be open to just playing more in the future. El Marion Dragon Time. Look, I saw on the Steam release list, play as a dragon. Gave me all kinds of nostalgia vibes of playing as a dragon. In, oh, what was the name of the, the game with the girl protagonist and you rode on the back of it? Was that Dracan? Her name was R Rin, I want to say. And the na the game was Dracan something something. And I loved that game when I was, I don't know, 16, 20. I was maybe 17 years old. Awesome riding on the back of a dragon type of game. So I, ah, it was only like five bucks. I bought it. I played it for eight minutes. And I wouldn't tell you it's half-baked. I wouldn't tell you it's even-baked. I will tell you there is... A bunch of flour and a bunch of sugar in there. And the rest of the... I mean, at the time that I played it, March 13th, I have not tried it again. This this impression may be completely different by now. At the time that I played it, there was a bunch of flour and sugar in a bowl. And the rest of the recipe all needed to be, to be created. Maybe by now it's a delicious chocolate peanut butter cake. Very much doubt it. <laughs> I bet it's been... I can click on it. See, major update on November 15th. All right, I'll, I'll believe you. Maybe it has become a little bit better. I will not, it's early access. So, you know, I went in expecting something, something pretty uh, similar to that. Oh, now ah, I see why this opens. I didn't want this open because it's kind of distracting. There you go, there you go. But when I click on things, it's going to reopen them up. Uh, don't recommend it in the state that I saw it in. It's still early access, but hey, if you want to be a dragon and burn people down to a crisp, this may be a fit for you. If nothing else, be aware that this exists and check it out if you feel like it. Transport Tycoon Deluxe. I saw this on the Steam page. It is completely free. You can get this right now completely free. If you have never played a tycoon game or if you have played a tycoon game but never this one, sink 20,000 hours into it. And you can, and it's a fantastic thing. The nostalgia that I got, I basically saw it and I was like, I need to install it. I need to just see the screen, the start screen, and I need to go in there and just start a company. Because the nostalgia blast that I got, I was like, I went in there, it's like, nostalgia, uh, splooge all over me. 
please give me this nostalgia. It was only four minutes that I put it on, but it was a great four minutes. The memories of going to battle with my brother. Because we wanted to play this game so bad on our CRT monitor. I'm, I think it was 486. It was not a Pentium yet. Fighting against each other. I would play for an hour. He would play for an hour. He would put his whole face in front of my... I mean, his whole hand in front of my face like this to keep me away from that computer. So he could keep playing. He was three years old. Well, I mean, he still is. He's still alive. I hope that he stays alive for a long time. <laughs> three years older than me. So, you know, he could bully me if he, feel, if he felt like it. But the memories that I have from this game, of course, my father also played it. Like, we, we all had a great love for Transport Tycoon. So seeing this, I just had to open it. Uh, I don't know how it holds up now if you compare it to modern tycoon games. But man, I absolutely adore this game and just the idea of this game. And probably this game is the culprit of me just enjoying the tycoon genre in general. And not just enjoying it because I get addicted to it, but because of the concept of having this... You know the history with it, and wanting to play more of the ga of games that are like it. It is the reason why I'll seek it out. Wizard of Legend. Apparently, only seventy-seven minutes. I again, I will tell you, I played that for at least five hours. It was a great time. I loved it, and I definitely recommend this game. Like it felt, it, it's a roguelike. It's a top-down roguelike. Uh, plays kind of like a uh, Hyper Light Drifter, but not really. I, that's a bad comparison. I don't know what to compare it to, but it's a top-down roguelike. It's fantastic. It just feels so good to play this game. All the magical powers that you can use, and you can use them, uh, uh, you can create all kinds of builds and combinations. It, it feels like a very well thought out, very well executed roguelike that uh, I did not play much of because on its heyday, like it, when it came out, it was very popular. A lot of different YouTubers were playing. I was like, ah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do the same thing. It looks cool and all, but I'm not going to do it. And then later I tried it out. It's like, man, this is great. I could totally make a series out of it. It's, it's a fantastic role. Like that's basically the bottom line. 100% uh, recommended. If you even had a little bit of enjoyment out of Enter the Gungeon, you will probably really, really like this this game. I, I just felt like a badass every time that I played this game. Extremely hard, though. I will tell you that much. I don't know if later on, you know, as you unlock all the good stuff and all the different spell builds and all that nonsense, it gets a little bit easier. But it was a very tough game. It was a very difficult game. Never actually got to the end. Then again, you know, only play 77 minutes. So you can't really expect to finish a uh, roguelike like such as this in only 77 minutes. Either way, uh, highly recommended. Shadow Man Remastered. Do you do you just speak about nostalgia blasts? Th this one, I wanted to play more of it because uh, it's the nostalgia is not really for the beginning of the game. It's for. I remember when I was playing it, sixteen years old, something like that. When I was playing, it, I was so impressed with the depth of it. It just kept going and going and going. I mean, this is the, my memory of it. It may not match the facts. But I remember you went to like eight different worlds and there was all these super villains all based on uh, serial killers and stuff like that. It's a, it's a Zelda-like. I would definitely call it a Zelda-like. It's a 3D action role-playing-ish, action role-playing game uh, where you unlock... Uh, also kind of like 3D action Metroidvania, kind of like. You unlock all kinds of places. I think Zelda-like is, is a decent way to put it. Or maybe even Tomb Raider, like, eh, whatever. It's hard to... It's a genre that is a very, uh, very well-versed, but not something that, that I play very much. It's not really my jam. Most of the time I don't play this type of games, but, you know, I got all that nostalgia, so I, I uh, it is a great... Remaster, I'll tell you that much. Works great. It, uh, if you are even remotely interested, it's also like it. Liked a lot the themes and the atmosphere, and uh, it's very dark. It's very gritty, but also 
very video gamey. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, it's hard to to pin down what's special about it, but it's definitely one of the classics. It is. Uh, I think it's actually based in a comic. The the IP is it started as a comic, and they adapted it as a as a video game. And it's definitely worth your time. Even now, I would say not just the gameplay, but the writing. I thought the writing was there was a lot of cheesy stuff. And, you know, I'm working off my memory, but I thought it was a, a fantastic game, Shadow Man. I loved it. Freaking loved it. I don't know if I should write a uh, review about it. about it. I'll just leave it be. Slay the Spire. 293 hours played. I have some experience slaying the Spire. It is an awesome... It is the deck builder game there is some runs on the channel by the way if it's not on this channel it'll be on the alternative channel for a while i was confused about where to put my gameplay uh it might have all ended up in in the second channel or maybe even half and half whatever slay the spire is a fantastic deck builder it is the deck builder that everybody else has aspired to be and Basically, it's who, they are the people who started the trend. Now, there's like 10 deck builders released per month on Steam. And, you know, with uh, mixed results, Slay the Spire is what started that. And it is so good. The game design is so fantastic. The card design, it's just so bang on. All the other stuff that you can play, you're probably better off just going back to Slay the Spire and getting re-addicted to it. The only criticism I'll give Slay the Spire is the art direction. It was not my, uh, it was not really something that appealed to me. The, the art direction, you may enjoy, you might like it a lot. I really did not jibe with it. It's not like gross or anything. It's just the kind of spindly shapes and I don't know. It, the weakest aspect of Slay the Spire, in my opinion, is the the art direction i must have reviewed this game right surely i did let's go to the store i have never reviewed this masterpiece i mean it's not like it needs it Eighty-eight thousand reviews i'm going to add myself to it though uh uh you may have slayed the countless spires but there is always more spires to be slain. This is... I'm going to repeat what I just said pretty much. This is the deck builder game. The one that started it all. And honestly, you're probably better off playing Slay the Spire again instead of trying out of uh, one of the eight deck builders that came out this month on Steam. Uh, only I'm gonna give you a 9 out of 10. I do like giving games and numerical value i think that's valuable that's always been valuable but you gotta keep it honest right this is a near perfect game that's a 9 out of 10 for you 8 out of 10 i'm um, docking one point for the wonky art direction really didn't jive with me there you go of course allow comments don't be a filthy coward of course i recommend it there you go post review I may go back and edit them if you, that's even possible. I don't even know if that, is it possible to edit the uh, reviews. I think that it is. Anyway, fantastic game, Slay Aspire. Big fan. Holy crap, it's been 18 minutes. There's still a lot of games to go, go through. Another game right here, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Do you need me to drone on about The Binding of Isaac? 148, seven hours uh, on, uh, played on Steam. 100 plus episodes on the channel fantastic roguelike arguably one of the you know the pioneers of the roguelike craze that uh i think it has calmed down quite a bit right you don't get any, as many roguelikes as we were getting in the middle of the 2020s in the 2020 but there's still a a, a very giant genre that this is a, a big responsible of it i'm not going to elaborate that 
uh, on freaking Binding of Isaac, what could I possibly say that it hasn't been said yet about the Binding of Isaac? Love making retarded children and uh, then having them die. The Complex. This may be one of the weirdest entries that you'll see on this list. Look, I saw this actress whose name I don't remember. I saw this act actress on the cover and I was like, I must buy this game. I must play it a little bit just so I can write a review saying, who brought the rocket? You may or may not get that reference. It is a letter Kenny reference. She is, uh, <laughs> she is, she plays the sister Katie in Letter Kenny, a Canadian show about the most retrograde hit, uh, Hicks. Nice onesie. Is it coming men? Oh, I think you come in men enough for all of us. It is a hilarious show. I love the show. I've watched most seasons of it. It does get a little uh, not as not as funny, but I think it still holds up during the later seasons. I saw her. I needed to do it. Never got around to it. You saw. You see that it's one minute played, but I have every intention to do it. Uh, actress is a, just freaking hot as a hot iron. It is hot as a a Dwarven Forge. It is, uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> that's the entire reason that I got. She's pretty, and I like her on Letter Kenny. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out other thing that she's done. Might this be trash? I have no idea. This is a genre that I have no interest done in. Like the entire live action, uh, choose your own adventure stuff is like, ah, I don't care about that stuff. But made an exception. I will eventually, hopefully, experience this game, and I will maybe tell you my opinion about it. For now, though, who brought the rocket? It was Letter Kenny. Transport Fever 2. Did I just talk about tra uh, Transport Tycoon Deluxe? That, Deluxe? That is the only reason why I have uh, any, any interest on Transport Fever type games. I played 33 minutes and realized this is a lot to get into, and I have 20 other things to do. I'll leave it for later. Later never came. But, you know, it has a great pedigree. It's a uh, Transport Fever is fa a fantastic Transport Tycoon game. So if you have any kind of management interest on uh, a tycoon game, I will definitely uh, say check it out. I can't say I recommend it because I only played 33 minutes. I don't feel qualified to say that this game is good, but it definitely has a lot of buzz and a lot of uh, great recommendations around it. Pretty sure if we click on it, go to the store page, it's going to be overwhelmingly but very positive. That's good enough for me. Uh, like it's not any kind of weird cash grab or something. You know, sometimes they come out with a sequel and it's total trash. They just wanted to capitalize on their success and stuff like that. Transfer Fever 2 is a, is a fantastic tycoon game as far as I can tell. Abzu, another game that comes with a fantastic recommendation around it. It's kind of like a, a relaxing scuba diving game. Only play one minute. Never got around to trying it out. That's all I can tell you about it. It's supposed to be very nice experience, kind of like a going home ish kind of experience where you just it's more of like a, a walking simulator, I guess that you could say a diving simulator in the sense of you just experience the thing. I don't know how much gameplay is. That is just my understanding of it. This could be completely erroneous, so don't take my word as gospel. But uh, definitely something that I am interested in playing at some point. You see, uh, another tangent at the at the 23 minute mark. Who cares? I love video games, not just because I love playing them. As I grow older, I have discovered I don't just love playing video games. I love the concept of video games. Knowing that they exist, looking at them on the collection and looking at the beautiful production, the, you know, the art that there's uh, to them. Sometimes, like this month, I will come home and I don't have time to play video games, but I will start Steam and just look at the collection and be like, these games are neat. I like it. And just drinking the art and whatever uh, the store page says and I'll look through the releases and derive uh, some satisfaction from that because I enjoy just the concept of it. I like to keep a giant wish list where I look for, for sales of anything that I might be even remotely interested in. I love supporting games that really look like there was a lot of work put behind them. You know, I enjoy the concept of video games as a medium, and I try to show my money. 
Skullgirls. It's like an encore. Didn't play a whole lot. This is shows 101 minutes. Most of that was in tutorials, just learning to play the game. Uh, it is enormously, enormously successful to the fighter game. But I had this around April or so. I had this, for some reason, this impulse, this craving to play fighting games. And I just got into this and Street Fighter V that is coming up. I didn't really get that much into Skullgirls. I kind of bounced off the tutorials. I was like, eh, I don't want to learn so many combos. I just want to cast a freaking Hadouken, you know? And it just seems there is so much complexity to this 2D fighting game that I, I want to get really lost into that. And it's, and that's what happened with Street Fighter V too. I also, the more I played it, the more I realized, wow, getting good at this game takes a lot of work. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to get good at this game. <laughs> and I just... I just kept going. Like, I tried to get good. Let's say, put it this way. I tried to get good, and getting good was so hard that I was like, I'm going to move on. I got nothing to prove. I'm no longer 18 years old and, and with 20 hours to put into learning the perfect way to combo these three moves together. That's a, a tragedy of growing older. You no longer... You value your time so much more than getting good at a game. Men, that game better provide you with all kinds of entertainment value. Like it must be your calling to get good into uh, uh, to get good playing a game. Like for example, with Splunky Two, I was like, I'm gonna get good and I'm going to spend the time doing it. Skullgirls, well, I will 100% recommend it as a fighting game. Uh, I bounced off the difficulty of just playing fighter games. Here's another one, Guilty Gear, Xrd, <laughs> Revelator. Uh, Strife has been pretty uh, successful. Is the sequel to this Guilty Gear. Uh, it played the previous one, and exactly same story. Fighting games, they take a lot of commitment from somebody to be able to actually get good at them. Hey, you! if you pick it up, you go online, you play some matches, you're going to have a blast, you're going to have a great time. But if you're a freaking sweaty palm idiot like myself and you have that itch of I want to win and I want to beat other people that are good, it's not enough. I'm going to beat some scrubs. I want to go in and beat other people that actually know what they're doing. And at that level, I just can't because it takes so much work to get better at the game and not just work to get better. I'm actually... That's another reason why I bounce off, because I realized my brain isn't built for fighting games. The reaction times that you need for it, it's a little bit more than what I can provide with my current setup. This this right here, over here, cannot handle the reaction times and the, the quick thinking that it takes to react to uh, moves in fighting games. I'm just, I'm just not good enough for that. I'm not fast enough for that. My neurokinetics are not developed that way. So I was like... This is just an exercise in frustration. I'm just going to bang my head against the wall. And unlike Dark Souls, where I can get decent enough to, you know, uh, blast through that door, that wall, this is just going to erode all my skull sockets until I am completely dead if I keep banging my head against it. Morbid, the Seven Acolytes. This is a... I know that Souls-like is very uh, tired as a descriptor, but it's a top-down Souls-like. It's uh, you, you played Salt and Sanctuary, those 2D Souls-like. This is the same, uh, like, a, like Bastion. Bastion is a good comparison. But it's good to say that it's Souls-like because it's uh, uh, also a very gritty, a very gritty atmosphere. I really, really liked it, by the way. Morbid, the Seven Acolytes. Really loved the themes, loved the, how, uh, the aesthetic of it. It's a fantastic atmosphere. Another game where if you ask me how long did I play, I was I would say at least three hours. Apparently it was 49 minutes. That is uh, what is quite the tragedy there, but definitely uh, I would recommend it if you enjoy a game like Bastion, a game like a, a top-down Souls-like. It's a Definitely would not call it hard. It was not difficult by far. It was not difficult in the slightest. I mean, not in the slightest, but... It was definitely not Dark Souls, where difficulty is concerned. It was a fun, gritty, dark, sort of Cthulian. I had that vibe 
of you know horrors and tentacles and stuff like that. It was very very cool. I, I've always enjoyed that whole that kind of lore, the entire you know tent be, be tentacle monstrosity from beyond the veil. I I really like that. So 100%, I would say, great game. There's one of those games that I just mentioned earlier how it feels like a ton of work was put behind it and uh, you know you can feel it. You can feel it as you play Space Haven. I love RimWorld. Space Haven is like a RimWorld-like. And I wanted to play it. It's still in early access, I believe. Only played three minutes. I was like, this is another game where it takes a lot of learning. And I left it for later. Got no recommendation for you. But it is a RimWorld-like. It is a, sta a space station. You can build up the space station. You get your... Your pawns, astronauts, whatever they're calling this game, and they have their personalities and all that good stuff. You know, if you have played RimWorld, this is RimWorld in space in the space station. You can see the tiny, tiny, uh, uh, it's pixel art. So, you know, a game you can be aware of. Probably still an early access, isn't it? Let's go to the store page. Yeah, still an early access game. It would have told, I wouldn't know if this has, had come out of early access. Pretty sure though, that is one of the good ones. It just, you know, just needs more work to come out and, uh, and be worthy of a 1.0 release, but definitely not something that is just garbage. That, you know, a cash grab or, or something trying to build on the success of somebody else. Definitely something that you could look into. Northgard, a uh, strategy game. I felt, I think I was watching a bunch of starcraft videos i feel like playing some strategy you can see there uh, i played four hours never finished it but it's a neat little strategy game based on norse mythology it did some different things that i had never uh, encountered before in strategy it was very weird to manage the resource in a good way it was like a new way of gathering resources a new way to uh, expand your territory it was based very much on how you expand your territory, like expanding the boundaries of uh, your domain on every map. And only if you expand to certain places, you get these many resources and blah, blah, blah. It was a fun, enjoyable game. I wouldn't say it's, it's reinventing the wheel or anything like that, but definitely another game that feels like people behind it care if you are a strategy game uh, advocate. If you're a strategy game fan, I would advocate for you to try this game. Still, though, don't feel like it's warranted for me to write a review. Uh, we're probably going to now go into a lot of VR games. Blade and Sorcery is one such. This was purely a sandbox game when I got it. I believe that the, it has gotten updates since then that introduces a campaign or something similar to that. I love VR. I've been playing a lot of VR, especially just to work out. It is so fun. To, uh, to work out in VR. Like, it, it, if, you're, if you want to do cardio, VR is so much fun. It's just a world apart to uh, just freaking a static bike or, or running on a treadmill or going outside, of, <laughs> going outside and running. <laughs> you jump, you filthy Neanderthal. Stay inside and enjoy your virtual worlds. Anyway, this is a fantastic sandbox fighting game that I kind of, I was like, I don't want to create my own fun. You provide the fun. I don't want to do it. Uh, that being said, it's supposed to be very good if you enjoy that kind of stuff. We carry on to the next virtual, virtual reality. It is a neat little, very on rails game. It has a lot of jokes. It's like a one-time experience. You just go through it. I haven't finished it. Pretty sure I'm, I'm kind of close to it. Uh, there is, you know... Cool gameplay. It is funny. The writing is pretty good. I can't really say too much on that. You are you are an enslaved human who tries out virtual reality headsets and and headsets and services different AIs as a human. It is, you know, it's a neat, funny concept. Didn't feel like this was any kind of Magnus Opus. It, it's just a cool little game that some that people made in VR. Uh, I don't know what kind of uh, buzz there was around it, but it is definitely one of the good ones. Uh, one of those VR experiences that you go in, you play through it, and that, that was fun. And then you move on with your life, never think about it ever again. Overload is... I don't know if you guys ever played Descent. It was a six-axis game where, you know, you know three uh, uh, first-person shooters. Well, you also add 
height because you are inside a ship and you go through these claustrophobic complexes of tunnels and stuff like that. Overload is a descent like it is I think the spiritual successor, that's what they build themselves as, of Descent. Never really uh, got around to playing it. I just loved Descent. Bought it out of the nostalgia. Cannot tell you whether it's good or not. Pretty sure it has good reviews. I don't think it was any kind of uh, a weird failure or anything like that. Yeah, very positive. Like People like this game. If you like Descent, look at that. It instantly, instantly mentioned. Please go back. Please go back. From the creator of Descent. So yeah, it's definitely the... Spiritual successor, successor of Descent. If you enjoyed Descent, that is some mold shit. That is just deep cuts right there. Man, my brother was more into it than I was. He's always been more into the, the flight simulators type of thing. But uh, played a lot of it in, in its time. So I don't see why you wouldn't enjoy it. Sublevel Zero Redux. I actually made a video about this one. It's uh, also like Descent, but it has a roguelike layer on it. it you do runs. Uh, in a first-person ship little thing. And man, the, those tunnels are very claustrophobic on this one. It's a, you know, it, it procedurally creates maps. There's a video on it on the channel. Uh, I would definitely say worth your time if you are into that kind of game. And if you're not, just move on with your life, I suppose. It's, it's just a great little game that I would definitely say. Uh, has a lot of fun. It, I really liked uh, all the variety with the weapons. You know, all the has that roguelike veneer that we are all addicted to. Subnautica, I tried to play it in VR, and it didn't work with Oculus, not Oculus, with, uh, what's my thing called? The Valve <laughs> Index? It did not work with Valve Index, unfortunately. The controls were unplayable. It looked really fun, though, and it has a, ma a massive success. I think PewDiePie played it to millions and millions of people. Uh, Subnautica, it's a very famous game, has earned uh, a well-earned reputation for being a fantastic, what is even this genre? It's like, it's the first person kind, no, it's not Minecraft, it's, I don't know, I don't know what I, to call this genre, it's like an exploration um, where you, exploration game where you build up more like a Factorio, <laughs> it's a first... Actually, no, not like first-person Factorio because that would be satisfactory, right? Subnautica is more like exploration and more exploration begets exploration because you can build better things. Kind of like Minecraft where you can, you know, you, you build up from the bottom. You start with three sticks and a rock and you end up building a whole nuclear submarine. That kind of vibe. But also with this uh, really awesome underwater terror type of experience there's some scary stuff as far as i understand it i only played 23 minutes and that was just me trying to make it work once again like most of these games i just did not play a ton of it it's just me trying it out leaving it for later later never coming elite dangerous another story where it just has fantastic pedigree i want to play it I never got around to it oh no another reason why i didn't is because it takes forever to get you know it's a it's a flight scene. Oh, no, no, actually, I remember what happened here. <clears throat> it had a launcher for a different platform. I forget what it was, but it had a launcher for a different platform. I was like, I don't want to sign up. I'm not going to do it. So <laughs> I just moved on with my life until you fall. This VR game, it's so good that I had to uninstall it because, you know, it requires some quick movements. And I was so into it that. It tweaked my back a little bit. That is a problem that I have with VR, unfortunately. I need to be careful or it will tweak my back. There is a freaking sword coming over there. I want to be like, Aah! and uh, my back will go out. It hasn't happened that dramatically, but I was like, I can't keep playing this game. If I do, I will be writhing on the floor next time I know it. Unfortunately, because it's one of the best VR experiences that you can possibly have. It's a fantastic fantastic uh first person combat and it has another layer of the wood which is roguelike that you go in and it's like runs and you make it as far as you can you get currency to unlock more stuff you go back into another run and see if you can get further it is not so much variety because the run is seems to be always the same the 
enemies do change a little bit, but the scenery is always the same. Uh, that all that being said, if you have any VR headset, until you fall is one of the best combats, combat games that you can possibly play. It feels fantastic, just just grabbing things and making them explode. It's just really really good control scheme. That is perhaps the best thing that they got going for themselves. The control scheme is fantastic. I am parched. Let me just drink, guzzle down some water. I'll give you a full view of my neck beard. I'll shave tonight. I it just was part of the joke that I've been so consumed by work, not even time to shave. I'll be shaving tonight. It won't be this disgusting. I just wanted to, you know, it'd be part of the bit. Hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. One of the better VR sandboxes, sandbox games you can play. There's not just the sandbox thing. It also has a ton of mini games. I was going to bounce off it because a sandbox game is just not for me. I have I have realized this that I don't want to make my own fun. I I need like I need at least Terraria's levels of guidance and and railroading. And Terraria is not very railroady at all, right? You just do a whole bunch of stuff that you just figure out as you go. But just being given tools and you make your own f fun with the tools, I, I'm not into that. That being said, it has a lot of different game modes within the game that are far more uh, focused on giving you a certain experience. Uh, that being said, I haven't tried a whole lot of them. But one of the better VR handling, uh, like there's so much realistic gun handling. If you're a gun fan, you... That's possibly the main appeal of hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. The guns, the insane amount of guns and just firearms and just tools of destruction that this game features. And they are all like, they really go out of their way to be realistic about the way that they work. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, fantastic VR game. Carnage Chronicles is, you know, the, the VR cavalcade keeps uh, rolling on by. Uh, excellent RPG as far as I could tell in 35 minutes. An RPG where you just club people's heads, perhaps the best that has come out as a you know full RPG type of game in VR fantasy. You can either be an archer or a or a head basher. Not much else to say about it. Excellent game. Uh, if you're interested in playing an, an RPG in VR, this is it. No Man's Sky. They turn into Yes Woman's Land as uh, the wonderful uh, internet historian video they turn around this utter failure of a game that where was panned and ridiculed for an entire year it is just magical the way that they transformed they actually said you know what we're not going to abandon this thing we have a vision we're going to uh, yes we, we had this enormous uh, controversy that we have created we did lie and did, did all that terrible shit now we're going to bone down, knuckle down on this game, and we're actually going to make it good. And they did. I have played 20 hours, maybe half of it in VR. It's a fantastic VR game, buddy. It does get a little finicky. Thing, everything takes too long. I decided, eh, I'm just going to play the regular version. And uh, it is so much fun in a very calm, relaxing way. You're not going to get stressed. Even in survival mode, you are not going to get all that stressed unless you're just dying from asphyxiation. You know, when you're starting, you do get a, a little bit of a resource uh, problem. It's kind of hard to find the resources, but eventually you just make it so that nothing is stressful and you're just flying around and uh, build, doing your thing from planet to planet, building bases, all kinds of stuff. 20 hours, I feel like I did not even scratch the surface. It was... It is a huge, enormous game that you can just spend your entire life playing. I do feel uh, qualified to review it, though. Let me just uh, go to that store page. I need to write a, a wonderful review for it. Uh, I do recommend this game. Uh, indeed. Yes, woman. Woman's land has achieved what it set out to do so many years and controversies ago 
Thank you, Internet Historian, for saving this game from the clutches of oblivion. Now, would that have happened if Internet Historian had made the video? Probably not. But uh, 8 out of 10 would scrounge for oxygen crystals any time of the day. 8 out of 10 seems a little harsh. Well, whatever. Eh, good enough. There you go. Post that review. Would have uh, uh, gone completely unnoticed if Internet Historian hadn't done that video. Probably not. If you haven't watched it, definitely recommend that you do. Uh, but he basically turned around the story like we all thought, myself included, that No Man's Land was... No Man's Land, No Man's Sky was just this this awful story of lies and deception. And it was uh, more... It was deeper than that. Anyway, let's carry on because uh, how much uh, do we have to go? November 20th. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're a little close. And uh, I can just keep going. It's probably going to be an hour total. I can not be so verbose with everything. I tried Google Earth VR. And this is one of the most awe-inspiring experiences that you can have in VR. It, and he knows it. It starts you out, out in freaking space looking down into Earth. And it's just awe-inspiring. Just to look at Earth that way and just zoom in and being able to travel Everywhere on Earth, if you have a VR headset, this is also free. So there's no excuse not to try it out. It's just uncanny, man. It's just freaky. Uh, you can... Oh, the, the phone's going off. That was the snowplow guy. Because, I don't know if you know, you probably don't know. In Alaska, it snowed during a whole, a whole week, nonstop snow. It has been a storm all through the continent, I suppose. And it was so much, I usually do it myself with these hands and a shovel. But it's so much that uh, we had to pay somebody to clear the damn snow. It's, it was impossible to get out of this place. Anyway, where the hell was I? Google VR, all inspiring for free. You can install it anytime you have VR. Fantastic experience. Go to your house, look at it. Wonder at all the surveillance that is on us and at all times. Republique. Republique. I think that's the way you pronounce it. The VR version is absolutely fantastic. I only play a little bit. This was kind of hyped back then because Jennifer Hale was the main antagonist. She does a really weird accent, though. I don't know why they made that choice, but Jennifer Hale feels wasted because she is doing this weird accent through the entire thing. And you can tell it's just Jennifer Hale doing an accent. It's, it's not... A character is Jennifer Hill doing an accent. She's a very famous voice actress, if you're not aware of that of that lady. Excellent voice actress. She did most famously, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, Female Shepherd. Freaking text now. Mm, be quiet. <laughs> Freaking phone interrupted my video gaming. Geeking out. Anyway, this is a weird game. I don't even know how to describe it. You control a dude behind a set of surveillance cameras and you are helping this lady escape from a weird-ass 1984 uh, complex type of dealio where it's like a school and the girl needs to escape, but it's also a prison. I played it more in the regular version, but the VR version is really, really cool how you're actually sitting behind that those monitors and you're controlling all the monitors and stuff like that. It's, it's really awesome a VR version of a game that I did not play to its completion. Uh, it's, it's just weird. You just control the, the, the girl indirectly. It's like indirectly controlling a girl to escape and, and figure out the plot and stuff like that. It's uh, narrative-based. Like, it's a indirect control stealth game. How about that? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Quake. I saw this on the store. And I was like, I don't think I ever finished Quake. They made a remaster. Let me play Quake and finish it. Finish it. I never actually finished it. 114 minutes. But, man, I had a great time. And, I, and it feels just like... You know when you remember a game that you played 10 years ago or 20 years ago, if you're that old? 
and in your head it looks amazing, but then you you know that nostalgia gets too much to bear, and you go and try it out, and you look at it, and it's like, holy shit, this looks like garbage. <laughs> Uh, the remaster makes sure that doesn't happen. It uh, does whatever it needs to do to make it work in in high resolution. And of course, it looks dated. You know, it's, it's what it is. It's Quake. But it makes it look so that it's not nearly a, a shock to the senses how, uh, how old this game is. It's a fantastic remaster as far as I could tell. Loved it. And I do plan to finish it eventually. Quake, you know, do I even need to tell you what the incredible first-person shooter Quake was in his heyday? Uh, right after Doom, Quake was the next big thing of first-person shooters. Synth Riders, a uh, game that tries to be Beat Saber, and it's just not good enough. It, it's like a, a spin a bit on Beat Saber, but I, I just wasn't into the whole control scheme. You may enjoy it. Beat Saber for the... VR is extremely famous, isn't it? You just, you know, destroy boxes at the at the rhythm of the beat. And etc. This is kind of like it, but it's weirder and I did not enjoy the way that it plays. That being said, it introduced me to Electro Swing, a genre of music that I had no idea I loved. <laughs> it's you know, when you listen to enough electro swing, it all starts blending together. It's a genre of music that it feels like you can only take it so far. But there's some serious, incredible bangers in electro swing. If nothing else, go right now on the YouTube. Open another tab to a YouTube search and type Lone Digger. And listen to Lone Digger, the original album version. Not the live versions. Live versions suck ass. The original album version of Lone Digger is the best banger you're going to hear today, maybe this year. It's so good. Black Book. It's a deck builder-ish kind of thing, but very, very focused on narrative. This is the opposite of the other things I've been telling you. If you ask me, how long do you play Black Book? I was like, 20 minutes maybe. I, I checked out what it's about and then... I thought it was good, and then I never got back to it because of the same reason I keep telling you. Apparently, I played 55 minutes. That's good. That's fantastic. Uh, it's a deck builder, but much more focused on narrative. I could not tell you much more than that. Uh, it seemed good. I will tell you, though, it is definitely not made in the U.S. The first language was not English. The translation leaves a lot to be desired. It's not, like, awful. It, it, it's not unreadable. But definitely you can tell the first language of whoever wrote the dialogue is not English. Street Fighter, Street Fighter V, this is the one that I actually played the most, 17 hours. This was an honest try at getting good at finding video games and realizing that I can't. <laughs> Street Fighter V, though, it has a lot of controversy around it in the actual community. Since I am not a veteran of that community, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great Street Fighter game. I come from way back the Alpha days, Street Fighter Alpha 2. That was the game that I played to, to exhaustion. We played so much. My local group of uh, brother and his own friends, because I didn't have my own friends, but I hung out with his friends playing Street Fighter Alpha 2. We played so much of that. Uh, so there was some nostalgia for it, but as far as I can tell, Street Fighter V is, is a fantastic uh, fighting game that I'm just not good enough to, to be good at, but it was great. Cosmo Dread was my attempt at trying out horror in VR. I was like, I'm going to brave it. I'm going to do it. Look, I played freaking Amnesia the Dark Descent. I can handle horror in any kind of virtual medium. And I could. I was surprised that while it was... An intense experience and getting murdered by a monster, getting too f close to me too fast for me to flee. I didn't crap my pants, but there was a nugget <laughs> trying to come out. It was it was a rough time, but that being said, fantastic atmosphere. If you want to try horror in VR, Cosmo Dread, you could do a lot worse than Cosmo Dread. Only 25 minutes played. So I cannot really go much further than that. I will say, though, that 
because of design constraints, I feel like the problem with VR right now is that you can't really walk. And you have to just go up with the controller and you, you walk at a snail space. And because it's VR and it will give you motion sickness, you can't just zoom around like in any first-person shooter. You're just putzy, putzy, putzing around uh, like a little... Uh, a little wheelchair or something like that. It's just kind of sad. So it kind of gives you this sense of Im impotence. You want to go faster, but you know if you go faster, it's going to cause some trouble. And you want to walk around, but if you walk around, you bump into the wall. So there's a bit of frustration in the VR space right now because of that. I feel like the medium is still really evolving. There's no telling what uh, Facebook is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Meta is going to do with it. Soon, though, we will just have chips in our brains and we'll just live in the Metaverse by edict of Facebook slash Meta taking over the entirety of uh, the government of every world and then it will become law that every child is implanted with that in the womb. So, you know, that's how VR is going to take hold in the mainstream. Pathfinder Kingmaker, this is the game that I had in 2021 i'm pretty sure that i played it from 2020 as well if you go back to splunky episodes you can probably hear me talk about pathfinder for a f solid two years this game is so insanely long it is one of the best rpgs computer rpgs that i played since freaking Baldur's gate and um planescape torment days uh I would definitely compare it much more to Baldur's Gate than I would to Planescape Torment. Tor Torment is in a legal of its own. But I loved it. I loved it so freaking much. I had that same itch of creating new characters all the time because I love to test new builds. Pathfinder has the most awesome build maker. Like the character progression in Pathfinder is the most flexible and fantastic. Like... The amount of options, endless is a cliche, but it's nearly endless. The amount of different things that you can you can mix and match, take levels in all kinds of classes. As far as medieval fantasy role-playing games, you can do a lot worse than Pathfinder. Now, that being said, could I use a lot less grind? The game feels padded. It, it feels a hundred, no, that's too, a little too much. At least... At least 50 hours too long. They could have condensed this somehow uh, much more. I get what they were trying to do. Like the entire Kingmaker aspect of Pathfinder. How you manage your own kingdom. You are the ruler of a kingdom. You deal with problems as they come. Like, you know, when you are the ruler of a kingdom, you seldom go invade people. You just deal with the problems. You're just constantly on that treadmill of dealing with nonsense that happens in, uh, in your kingdom. And only sparingly do you get chances to look outside your kingdom and see what you can possibly do out of it. Uh, Pathfinder does capture that, Kingmaker. But it takes too long. It takes too long and too much grind to get through it. That being said, do not regret a single hour of it. I loved it. absolutely loved it. Surely I wrote a review of a freaking Pathfinder Kingmaker. I did not. I can't believe I didn't review this game. We're going to do it right freaking now. What the hell do I say about Pathfinder Kingmaker that I didn't just say? Hmm. Let me think about it. That's right. That's right. I remembered. I have the perfect thing to say about Pathfinder Kingmaker. Queen Frigidia Rel uh, uh, Kingdom motto was... Death to Descent. She took every measure conceivable. That's with a B. No. Cons cons there you go. Conceivable <laughs> to enforce her motto up to and including... Mm, human sacrifice to Lamashtu and uh, wanton destruction of hmm. 
filthy. The centers. Eh. Human sacrifice to Lamashtu. That's that's pretty good. I give it a nine. Ah, that's an eight out of ten. Coulda used a lot less kingdom grinding. There you go. Grinding. Queen Frigidia, she was the biggest bitch you can possibly imagine. She was like the, the life and deeds of Queen Frigidia are worth a video on their own. They are like she was awful to everybody, and I love it. I love the fact RPGs, the way I play them is I want to know how much awful shit you're going to let me get away with. And that's how much I'm going to enjoy it. I love pushing in RPGs, how far is the developer letting me screw with things? <laughs> and it's, it is amazing. Pathfinder Kingmaker lets you be so freaking evil. is disgusting, and I loved it. Thrill of the Fight. This is one of the fantastic options for working out in VR. Boxing has never been something I've enjoyed. I've never had a single bit of interest. Wow, it's been an hour. Single bit of interest in boxing, zero. Nothing. Great fun in VR because you're not getting punched in the face by some uh, bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty school bully that just wants to put you in a in a head choke and then uh, give you a wedgie. That's not that's not from personal experience or anything. And thrill of the fight. A fantastic boxing. I think it's possibly the best boxing game on. In VR, to the point that I was so enjoying it that I went looking for others and I was not impressed by the other options. So, Thrill the Fight, if you want an amazing freaking workout, something that I, I was surprised about, my abs would be sore. And you wouldn't think that from boxing your abs would be sore, but you're weaving constantly like this to a point where, like, holy crap, that really works out my abs. That was a, a great time uh, punching this idiot, though. Uh, it's perhaps the best part. Just just one, two, and another uppercut and just knocking them down. That is super satisfying. Fantastic stuff. Would recommend it to anybody that wants to, to, to work out their aggression in VR. Look, don't judge me. I tried it out. It had some incredible reviews. People are saying it's like real freaking table tennis. And I'll tell you, Judging by how bad I am at it, which is very much in line with how bad I, I am in real life. And this is something that my father said. I was telling my father about it uh, because he, he's a huge table tennis buff. He has so many trophies of table tennis. He's 60 now, 60 something. So, you know, he's not as good as he used to be. But my father will beat your ass at table tennis unless you play at a competitive level. He will wipe the floor with you, no questions asked. And he told he I told him about it, and, he, and I told him how real it is. And he was like, "So you must be pretty bad at it, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm really bad at at it because it's actually realistic." Uh, he was like, "Oh, then maybe I'll try it out." <laughs> that's the, that's how savage my father is. Uh, that being said, yeah, a hundred percent. This table tennis simulation in VR is. I mean, obviously, it's not like the real thing, but it's as real as you can get with a freaking... And because, you know, it's not like tennis where you're swinging a big-ass racket and you had to put a lot of force into it. With a paddle, you can simulate a table tennis paddle pretty uh, closely with a controller because, you know, you get a little bit of feedback of... of uh, what's the word for it? The, the vibration. There's an actual word for it. The haptics. Is that the word for it? The vibration on the controller simulates a, pa a t table tennis paddle pretty well. So I have smacked the walls a lot and with, with this because you really get into it and you try to get to that ball and, you know, you go out of your, of your play area. But a fantastic simulation. I was really impressed by how real that is. To the top is a game in VR where you grab onto blues and you go to the top of a mountain. It is an incredible load of fun. Just soaring through the sky. <coughs> soaring through the sky like a madman. 
it does get a little old and the harder levels they get a little too finicky to be as fun as I was having with the easier levels because you know the appeal of the game wasn't to figure out how to the puzzle of going up the mountain the appeal was go as fast as possible going climbing all the place so when the levels get really hard and you get to actually figure out how to climb the mountain uh it, it gets not as enjoyable for me and i think that's where i dropped it other than that it's a super fun game blade of darkness another instance where i was fully guilty of acting on nostalgia blade of darkness build as the the pre dark souls experience somewhat like that you could agree with that but i played so much of this game it's unreal when i was a kid and i was i need i need to play it again i played it for 25 minutes remembered all of it kind of shrugged it off moved on with my life if you want a history lesson of what came before dark souls before dark souls was dark souls there was blade of darkness and it was a it was a success at the time but uh really really cool game for what it is would not recommend it for modern friends flexibilities uh, sensibilities it is not nearly as flexible of a gameplay experience as your dark souls your souls like game is going to be disco elysium i made a review of this game on the channel or in this other channel probably on the channel to this day my most disliked video in the entire channel <clears throat> But I loved it. I was just extremely disappointed with the ending. I will not spoil it for you. I don't think I need to say much about this Coalition. If you're in any capacity a computer RPG fan, this Coalition, it is one of the best games that you can possibly encounter. The writing in this game is one of those that that is just impressive. It's one of the best things. I, I am sure I wrote a freaking review for for Disco Elysium is so good. So freaking good. That's right. I punched that 12-year-old in the face and later shot his girlfriend to death. Got a well-earned game over screen. And I give it a 10 out of 10 despite how much the ending disappointed me. It was such a letdown. It was just a, a deflated fart of an ending. But even then, the, I will class the experience as a masterclass of writing and... Uh, Role playing is so good. It's so freaking good. Try it out for yourself. If you like reading in video games, try it out. Dungeons 3, an incredible, excellent successor to Dungeons 2 and to Dungeon Keeper. This is basically Dungeon Keeper with a strategy layer on top. The strategy layer where you go up to the overworld and you do stuff in the overworld is very simplistic, but it's a great addition. I made a review of Dungeons 2 in the channel, and it's basically Dungeons 2 with a bunch of tweaks and a new and a new uh, campaign. It's a little cringy. <laughs> the dialogue is hit and miss. It got me to chuckle here and there. I was buying into it because I had the goodwill of, you know, the, I really love Dungeon Keeper-like games. I think I have play, played every Dungeon Keeper like that has come out. And uh, Dungeons 2, 3 is a fantastic video game that does it mostly right. The entire Dungeon Keeper like experience is different. It puts its own spin on it. It's not the same thing like uh, War for the Overworld. It's a far more faithful a attempt at redoing Dungeon Keeper. Dungeon 3 does its own thing, but it's still uh, so satisfying to open at those those rooms and build the rooms and cater to your creatures and all that good stuff. It's a, it's a great experience. I played the entire campaign. One of the few games I've actually finished uh, this year. Dungeons 3. Surely I wrote... Uh, I did not write a review. I finished this game. I did not write a review. Look, it may make you cringe now. And then with the super corny dialogue, corny and self-referential dialogue and voice acting dialogue, 
the voice acting for the elf lady is kind of awful. But, uh, no, but... Just mute it and enjoy the excellent Dungeon Keeper-like gameplay. I didn't mute it because I am a glutton for punishment. But I would not recommend... I was misspell recommend this is double c is one c two m's right the experience eh. just me enjoyed the excellent dungeon keeper gameplay there's few things more satisfying in gaming than digging through the underground and building a crap ton of rooms to cater to your creatures. There you go. This is a uh, pretty lame, but good enough. I would definitely give this game an eight out of ten. Would mm, suffer through the never-ending narration anytime recommended there you go a review has been posted another plus one to the very positive reviews it really was a great time love the the spin that they did on dungeon keeper i thought it, it was very very successful spelunky 2 322 hours i don't need to speak about spelunky 2 spelunky 2 is fantastic it is not the perfect game that Spelunky HD was, but I do consider it a better game. And you may say, how can a game be better than perfect? Spelunky HD was just so beautifully balanced into this thing that it's like a once-in-a-lifetime creation. Spelunky 2 grabbed that once-in-a-lifetime creation, it added a lot of content to it, it made it I would say more fun, but it is not perfect, like Spelunky HD arguably is. Spelunky 2 is, you know, there are things to complain about more than Spelunky HD. Definitely my, my remaining gripe that I don't think anybody can argue with at this point is there's mo way more bullshit that can just kill you and you're almost... There's always a smidgen of responsibility because you died. But there are too many things that can kill you. And it's like, yeah, a superhuman may have been able to stop that from happening. Not me. All that being said, Splunky 2, you know, main thing in the channel. I, I'm still making... I, Splunky 201 is still coming. That's still happening. I, it's not an announcement. I'm an hour and 12 minutes into the video, but it, it is still happening. And... uh Big, big hearts to Spelunky 2 and everything it represents. The showdown effect, I spoke about this during a lot of uh, Spelunky videos. The showdown effect, I was pretty damn great at it. It's a multiplayer 2D battle arena type of thing. I double-clicked on it recently, saying, will there be any players for this? No. The answer was no. There was no way to get a game on this. Uh, there was. There's also like a... A Discord server, you can maybe get into a tournament that way. But by now, I completely lost all the skills that I had. I don't want to re relearn it. I can just tell you, you know what? I was pretty damn great at this game when it was good. When it, you know, when people played it, it's a thing in my past, and it's now an experience that I have in my back, and it's something that I can recall anytime. Bioshock Infinite. I saw it on my games list at some point in this year, and I was like, damn it, I'm going to go back to it, I'm going to finish it. And I did. Just, look, don't pay any attention, don't try to make sense of the plot, it makes no sense whatsoever. Just shooty shooty bang bang, enjoy your new waifu that you're going to get, and then be horrified at the ending, 
And, you know, and I move on. I move on. I didn't play the DLC because the I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to retread this. You're just, this is a cash grab. I felt like the DLC, the theme of it, uh, if you aren't aware, like Bioshock was a massive hit. It went to the depths of Rapture. It was huge. It was this one thing. It was this genius thing where you're a slave. Of, it, I don't want to even spoil at this point, but Bioshock was fantastic game. The narrative was great. Bioshock Infinite is like it's trying so hard to do something similar, but it does not get there. The narrative makes no sense whatsoever. If you put even a couple thoughts together about it, they're going to clash because nothing, like the plot, don't even try. Don't even try to make sense of it. Just accept it. Suspend your disbelief 100% and you'll have a great time having a first-person shooter with a, with a really enjoyable waifu in it. Surely, like, I finished this game. I'm going to review the crap out of it. There's no way. I don't think I wrote a review. Yes, I am indeed older than what you want me to be. Let's write a review. Um, b -b 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 -b. What was it? Look. Don't even try to make sense of the plot. Nothing is going to... Don't, just uh, why, why belabor the point? Don't even try to make sense of the plot. Just enjoy, just shooty, shooty, pew, 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 and enjoy your new waifu. I give it an 8 out of 10. Columbia was stupid as hell. <laughs> there you go. It is indeed recommended. Always allow the comments. People are supposed to be able to yell at you for your stupid opinions. Let's go back. Then we recommend it. Like, it was a fun time. It does take itself way too seriously. Like, you you can stop sniffing your farts by a shock infinite. You're not that all that. Your narrative, not even close. And it does feel, there's a little spicy, a little political. It really feels... Like these, the, the writers, they really want an excuse to say all kinds of racial slurs and get away with it. It's like they have this fetishized concept of racism. That's what Bioshock Infinite is about. Like the, the meta commentary and the, the themes of it. It's all about racism and, you know, uh, uh, all the America, how the terrible segregation that used to happen and all that stuff. It riffs on that, expands it. And it really felt like the writers were just salivating, where they're just, mm, we can say all these terrible things and get away with it because it's all just, a, you know, it's all a, 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 a story and a narrative. It's like so gratuitous. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. All I'm saying is that it felt dishonest how... They weren't trying to tell a story and the racial stuff was a part of it. They were like, let's make this story so we have an excuse to say these terrible things. I don't know how to explain it. It must be the cynic. Uh, the, I'm a cynical person. I'm going to give you cynical takes. Pistol Whip, this is the hardest, most intense leg workout you're going to get in VR. You will not realize it. But then you'll spend 30 minutes playing this game. And when you're done, the next day, your legs are going to be water. You will not be able to stand anymore. Because this game requires you to squat at all times. You're constantly weaving out of the path of bullets and shooting things while going like this and like this. <laughs> and uh, it's a, one of the most fun I have had in, in VR but make sure you play this at a time where you have a couple days to recover after. You're not going to need to do something intensive. Like, you know, I would play this in a Sunday, then go to work the next day. I regretted those play sessions because I was like, holy crap. I was not ready to do a 30-minute squat. And you're so into it. It's so much fun to play this game that you don't realize 
you're doing this enormous workout, that you're way overdoing it. You want to do one more song, one more stage because you're having so much fun. And it's like, ow, my legs now hurt. I am not a guy that is, you know, I, I'm not like a muscle buff. You can, you can tell, uh, but I'm not out of shape. I am in middling shape. I am fat, skinny fat. <laughs> so, but I have probably some pretty strong muscles from working 10, 12 hours a day, you know, constantly running all over the place. Still wipe me out. So, you know, watch out. Watch out for pistol whip and it's incredible. Power of destruction for your legs. Excellent. R really recommend it though. One of the greatest uh, VR experiences you'll have. Gris. I would put this at the best game I've played this year. I think it takes the cake. Gris is one of those creations, and I wrote this in my Steam review, I think. One of those creations that they would they would put in the capsule to send to other worlds to show the pinnacle of what humans can create. It is that beautiful. This game is so gorgeous. I mean... You can be cynical and you can be like, oh, sad girl, sad. Uh, but <laughs> it's a completely silent game except for when the singing happens. And the artwork, not just the artwork when it's, when it's uh, stationary, but the animation work, it is like nothing I have seen in gaming. You can compare it to maybe Ori of the Blind Forest. Is that the, the name of it? Ori and the Blind Forest, Ori and the, the Something Wisps. It is a beautiful experience like that, but it's a different art style. It's a lot of, uh, I'm also a big sucker for high contrast art. I really love like a, a sh the shadow in the front and then, you know, it creates a contrast with the background and all that stuff. But if you are even remotely art inclined, if you can appreciate good art, Play Gris and just be floored at the talent of the art department in this game. The gameplay is fun. I liked it. It's it's a 2D puzzle platformer. I wouldn't call it simplistic, but it is simple. The gameplay is, is functional. It's there to convey the story and the, the stuff that they wanted to put in there. But the art in this game, I have never seen something so gorgeous. And I would recommend it to anybody that wants to have a good time. It's a short-ish game. It's a, it took me six hours to complete it. And uh, it was such a beautiful, beautiful experience. It is so good. Like this, I cannot gush enough about it. It's like a reason why humanity deserves to exist. Because we can create something this beautiful. It, when I was, I had a... Uh, period uh, this year where I was a little black pilled on an uh, unrelated thing that uh, that I will I, I do plan on making a video about it. It's already all all the all written. I just need to do the script and do the all the editing, all that stuff. I was a little black pilled and playing this game just kind of showed me why it's worth being alive. Just experiencing something this beautiful, it kind of inspires you to want wanting to make something beautiful as well. And it, it was, it, it, I cannot tell you enough how gorgeous this game is. That's it. That's all I got. And uh, hopefully I convinced uh, at least one of you guys to give this game, this game a try and to just be floored by how beautiful the entire thing is. And the thing is, it starts beautiful. It only gets more to the point that it's a shame people don't get to see the late game because... It just gets more and more impressive because you gather the... Anyway, I've, I've gushed enough about it. Could not give you a more positive impression of this game. And definitely wrote a, a review for it. Uh, he done the blood right. It's a first-person fantasy-inspired game, but also there's like cybernetics and stuff. It's a cool first-person shooter. It's very puzzly, like in the, it's more exploration based than combat based. There's plenty of combat, but you know, the old school, uh, what would be Hexen or, or Heretic, 
where you there was a lot more uh let, let's say you're you're playing doom you're going as fast as you're always going doom but there's a fantasy veneer on top of it and the levels are really labyrinthine that is head on blood right it's a lot of fun only play 51 minutes but i definitely want to to finish it i had a, a great time rimworld you don't need me to sing the praises anymore of rimworld it is such an excellent excellent game i have said it many times before easily it's in the top 10 games ever made from lovingly nurturing your colonists to committing atrocious crimes against humanity rimworld has it all easily top 10 games ever made if you enjoy any kind of simulation of management simulation rimworld is is going to keep you busy for 500 plus hours make a jammer it's a game that i've not played much at all it's a buggy mess i supported it on kickstarter was it kickstarter or indiegogo one of those i think it was kickstarter uh it's from the creators of <sighs> stag lands serpent in the stag lands and I, uh, I was very taken with Serpent in the Staglands. I really like the idea of, I think it's just a, a, a matrimony. It's just two people working on this game. And they created this enormous RPG called Serpent in the, St Serpent in the Staglands. And this is their next game, Make a Jammer. It's a cyberpunk RPG. And it looked extremely interesting. And I wanted to support it. They came out with it. It was a horrendous buggy mess. They have released a bunch of updates i'm sure that they are working really hard on it let it keep baking <laughs> keep it in the oven let it keep baking cannot recommend it right now i hope that it will become good it looks like i really like the art style and, and what they're trying to do here it needs more developing time i don't know why they released it so early it, it, it really flopped when it came out because look at the store page the reviews are still mixed and it really shouldn't be. Like, why? I don't know. I don't know what drove them to release it this early. But uh, I am hoping that they will keep working on it and it will become that much better. Steering Abyss, another game that I actually finished. It is a Lovecraftian Terror from the Deep type of XCOM, but a lot more narrative-based. It does have an endless mode. I didn't try it. I... I Finished the campaign, I was like, yeah, I had a good time. I'm going to leave it. Steer Steering Abyss has a great atmosphere. You control only three to four scuba divers where, you know, XCOM, you could do like 12. Uh, and it has a lot more emphasis on horror than Terror from the Deep did. But it has a great atmosphere. Uh, you manage your base. is the submarine that you, you know, pump out the water, try to continue fixing up and all that stuff. Um and you manage your scuba divers, give them upgrades, give them horrendous mutations as they travel through this horrible underwater adventure that they're going. The writing is very good. I was very impressed with the writing in particular. I was like, I wasn't expecting much, but it was actually excellent uh, on that entire department. And the, the atmosphere is just fantastic. The gameplay. It's good. It's a good XCOM like. I would definitely put it on a on a it's pretty simple. Doesn't have a ton of tactical options. And I'll definitely tell you this. It starts hard and as nails. By the time you get to the end, it's kind of trivial with all your upgrades and all that stuff. It definitely I was not when I started, every mission was the brink of disaster. I got to maybe mission eight, and by that point, I was like, I'm just breezing through the shit. And so, uh, you know, it has a, a weird balance there, but I will definitely recommend it. I don't think I wrote a review and I need to, but I honestly, uh, I'm uh, running out of steam here. Let's just get to the end. Cultist Simulator. Look, it doesn't look like much. I did a series on this video game on the channel. It doesn't look like much. It's a Let's try a review where I can tell you exactly that, okay? Let's go to the store page. I'm going to write a review for it because I know that I haven't written a review. Look. Look. Listen. It, 
Actually, let's start with this. Listen, it doesn't look like much. Like much, it's a single player digital card game. But just let yourself be drawn in by the narrative and you'll be managing timers into the wee hours of the night. I would let Ezim play with make a plaything of my flesh if he would bestow upon me Alexis Kennedy's ability to put words together. You get a 10 out of 10. As long as you enjoy the genre. If you like single player card games, you'll be very hard pressed to do better than Cultist Simulator. It is a fantastic game if you like the premise, which is, you know, playing a card game where you manage a cult and just the lore, man. The lore, I was so taken by the lore. I love, there you go, love the lore in Cult of Simulator to the point that it has inspired me to, like, the next novel that I'm writing, I'm working on right now. I wouldn't say it's like a clone or anything, but it's very much inspired by having a, a huge variety of strange creatures and just being super far out there. The mythology is just weird as hell. And Cult of Simulator is to blame. It's so good. Exanima. Uh, they got a recent update after like a year of no updates. And it was on my news feed. And I was like, yeah, I'll play Exanima again. And I, uh, last two weeks, I have managed to scram 13. This was mostly last weekend that was... The, the the Christmas weekend I was spending it just murdering fools in the arena the update wasn't all that significant it was a good time to get back into the arena though and uh, just murdering fools if you're interested there's a there's a video on it and I wrote a review on it back then and it's just super good and I almost gave up on the first hour I just couldn't make the physics based controls do what I wanted them to do and kept dying to lowly zombies. I'm glad I stuck with it because once you get it, the game is one of a kind. It has two main modes, dungeon crawling and arena mode. The dungeon crawling is brutal and hardcore. There's not even a map, but the atmosphere and tension are excellent. Arena mode has become an addiction with a constant drive to do just one more match until 5 am. This is 100% true still. This is an excellent, weird game. It has this weird physics-based controlled uh combat and movement that you're going to have to work to get into. But once you get it, it's going to be so addictive and so satisfying. I absolutely love it. Hopefully they come out with a 1.0 release uh, with a finished game because I still haven't finished the main campaign. I'm kind of waiting. I don't want to go through the entire main campaign without the release, the final release. So I've just been having fun in the arena. Beat Saver, my go-to for when I want to sweat in VR. It is a classic. You can see 20 million videos of ple people playing Beat Saber on YouTube. If you don't know what it is, just type it on YouTube. It's so easy to get it once you see what it is. You just destroy boxes to the map that a creator has made based on the music. And it's so much fun. It is the funniest, funnest thing. Uh, and there's endless custom maps for music. So you'll never run out of music to jam to while you sweat your ass off fantastic cardio workout lorelei is the th last thing that i've been playing i loved the predecessor like it's a trilogy it is downfall the cat lady and now lorelei this was released earlier these uh, like two years ago let me it should show the store page when was tell me steam when it was released 2019. Yeah, that sounds about right. Lorelei is the conclusion of that trilogy. I just love the lore 
that they have created in this. It's a, I don't want to call it point and click because there's no mouse. It's all keyboard controlled, but it's like a 2D point and click adventure where you control it with a keyboard. The graphics are weird as hell. It's all like pictures, but they're also 3D objects. It's it's like the real world, but uh, you can see in the screenshots, maybe we can uh, look at some screenshots. I kind of want to tell you a little bit more about this game because it's very obscure. It's not a game that a lot of people know about. And I am so into the lore. Uh, I love stuff, you know, it has... Let's see, this is not a, a good example. This is a pretty decent example. This is what the game looks like. It's like pictures of stuff put into the game like composite and then with the artwork of the the lady in 2d it's it's the weirdest looking game i've played in a long time but it kind of works in, in this bizarre unsettling aesthetic that i really enjoy it has a very just like cultist simulator it has a weird uh a dark lore very uh eldritch eldritch lore you're working with and against this entity called the Queen of Maggots. She is using you, but you're also benefiting from her favor. It's weird as hell. And I like that it has to do a lot with, with uh, the afterlife. The character dies and gets brought back to life through the power of the Queen of Maggots. That's a really cool story. It's a very small indie game. I have no idea what the team consists of, but... If you're into 2D adventure games with a dark slant, like a weird narrative, definitely will recommend the entire trilogy. Downfall, The Cat Lady, which I absolutely adored, and Lorelei. Also has cool music, too. Uh, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I am uh, maybe ch maybe halfway through. That's what I am. And that's, that's the video games I played this year. I didn't think I would be talking about it for a freaking hour and 36 minutes, but there you have it. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the camera didn't freeze. I was having some troubles with the camera freezing. I don't know what was happening there. It, it stopped doing it, so that's great. Hopefully, you enjoy yourself. If you stuck around to the entirety of, through the entirety of the video, probably you hopped around to see what I was talking about. I don't know if I'll bother to do uh, timestamps. I doubt that I will. Hopefully, I will at least bother to insert some gameplay footage, especially of games that I'm interested in you seeing and explaining more what the game is about maybe uh i'll do a little bit of editing work for the most part though this video should go up pretty soon i don't want it to be too far after the new year defeats the purpose right so i'll, I'll try to go light on the editing and after this i do have plans i have plans for the channel. i'm still around i'm just working on those long time long-term projects i'll tell you right now coming up Hopefully, the next video you see here. Nah, it, it will not be Splunky Duo. At first, it will be the biggest L that I this year I took a massive L. It black me for black pill me for a little while. It was rough. Got through it. I want to tell you all about it. Also, want to there's a Splunky Two One video, the script of which is all done, it's all narrated. Or I just need to put in a video editor and put all the footage together, and that's what takes all the work, and that's why. I haven't been able to get around to it. Then there will be a, another big announcement for things that I, uh, I saw already written that is coming out. And then I have another, a bunch of other projects that I, I don't want to even list, but it, it's all being done. I'm still here. I, I will be silent for a little while. I'm just working. I'm working on things. Don't worry about it. I'm still alive. Sorry if I no longer provide you daily gameplay. I just wanted to do other things. I'm still not discounting going back to daily gameplay because believe me, I miss it. I like <laughs> things happen in my life and I'm like, man, I would like to record some gameplay and talk about this nonsense because it was so much fun to just play a video game and then I tell you about some whatever stupid shit that happened in my life or an opinion that I had. I don't have an outlet for that. My wife is sick of hearing my nonsense. I needed some uh, fresh ears to bounce off of and be made fun of. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what was your game of the year. I'm actually, I'm, whenever I make a call to action, these days it's so cynical. Ooh, let me know what you think about these slippers in the comments below. Look, 
when I make a call to action, I'm actually genuinely interested because I know that my taste is kind of weird. I don't think this list of games that you're seeing in front of you, I don't think your list of games looks anything like this. So let me know what was your top five of this year, just this year. Not and not that came out this year. Let me know what is you played that you were like, I really enjoyed these games and we can uh, contrast and compare. Hopefully you enjoy yourself. I enjoy making this. It was a little longer than I thought that it would be, but whatever, it was a good time. I'll see you in whatever comes next. Until then, support your video game company of your choice. Oh, that was, that was a terrible outro, but I'm going to stick with it.